He completed his masters in EHTC Engineering from Vidyalankar Institute of Technology. He has over three years of experience in industrial fabrication. Currently, he is working as a research associate and fabrication lab in a uh, PCB lab in charge at Pillai Center for Innovative and Research. He is a certified PCB analyst and a design engineer. Uh, for and working under the Skill India uh, under the program ESSCI, he has conducted several workshops and uh, several workshops and guest lectures on the topics like PCB designing and fabrication, IoT and embedded electronics and emerging technology. He has two utility patents filed for non uh, non touch hand sanitizer and a high frequency LED light demo. So I would request everyone to please welcome them with a big round of applause. Good morning, good morning sir. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Are you sleepy or something? Yeah. So let's do it again. Good morning everyone. Good morning sir. So I hope you know what you are here today for. No? <laughs> So yeah, as uh, one of your uh, classmates introduced me, today we are here for the PCB fabrication workshop wherein you will learn how to make your own PCB. Along with that, uh, before we uh, go for the actual fabrication process, I would like to uh, show you that as I am already involved with industrial PCB designing, what all things that we do for uh, industrial PCB. Also, uh, there are some uh, things that are common in the industrial PCB design and the PCBs that you students make. So, we'll just first go through what all things uh, the industry prescribes, what are the norms, what are all the things, and then we'll, fabri uh, we'll fabricate or we'll go on the hands-on session. So, yeah, uh, I hope uh, you all are electrical students. Yes. 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 So, what do you understand by PCB? Yeah, PCB is a printed circuit board. But what does a printed circuit board do? This will not be a talk from my side only. This will be an interactive session where I hope to get your feedbacks, get your opinions, while I am speaking. So it's a two way communication. So let's do it that way. What is a PCB? Has, has anyone any idea of what a PCB is? No? Okay. Just the full form that it is a printed circuit board. Can you make out uh, from the words Printed circuit board, word to word meaning, yes or no? I hope my, uh, I am audible to even the last rows. Yes. Yes, it is fine, right? Okay, so do you know what is a circuit at least? What is a circuit? What is a circuit? Electrical? You, you, can, you can speak out. What is a circuit? Okay, just think about it. Until then, I'll just explain the outline of the workshop. Uh, today, what we are going to do is, obviously, we are going to introduce you to what are the printed circuit boards or what the PCB is. Then, uh, as I said, what are the types of PCBs that we use in industry? Then what are the designing constraints? What are the what is a PCB manufacturing guest uh, about the industrial as well as the hobby circuits or the process that we are going to follow today? Then we have the machines that we use for industrial fabrication. I'll just show the pictures and uh, tell you about what they do. Then the precautions, the main part. 
the precautions that you will be uh, that you will need to take today before attempting your PCB. What all things you should know prior to handling the PCB, and then we'll move on to the hands-on session. Is that okay? Yes. So yeah, tell me now what is a circuit. I don't expect I don't expect any exact answers. Just whatever comes to your mind, speak it. Circuit. When you switch on a button, a light glows. When you switch on a button, the fan starts. Right? Is it a circuit? Yes. So what 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 do you do by switching it on or switching it off? You control it or you provide electricity to it, right? Yes. Those are nothing but your electrical circuits, right? Because it operates on AC mains. Here in electronics, we have DC. We mostly work with DC, direct current. So whatever devices that you hold, your mobile phones, laptops, etc., they are all operated on DC, right? So for those things to work, we have printed circuit boards wherein the circuit is printed or circuit is made out on a thin plate of non-conductive material which replaces the wires copper wires in the electrical connections right right you get it as in the electrical connection you have your switch your fan uh, maybe there is a regulator in between to control the fan right the connection goes via the switch, right? So this, uh, the regulator, the switch, the fan, they are nothing but electrical components, right? In PCBs, we have, we, we do, uh, we, similarly we have components for them to work, right? Resistors, capacitors, inductors, etc. They are mounted on the PCB board, connected via the copper, wires which are very fine enough and that board does what what does that board do what does that board do perform the task it is designed to do as in for your mobile you have the motherboard what are its designated tasks what does a mobile do for you you can make calls Right? You can make calls, you can browse the internet, etc, etc, all these things. So for that things to work, on the motherboard, you have one processor, you have RAM, and all the allied components that make the mobile what it is, right? So these are nothing but all the electrical components that are mounted on a PCB board. <coughs> Next slide please. So can you answer this question, why do we need a PCB? Have you worked upon uh, things like this? Yes. It is called a breadboard, wires, LCD display. Have you worked upon this? Yes. By the looks of it, it does look messy, right? Yes. So what, how, how come this messy or how come these wires would be eliminated? By using a PCB, so you get what uh, what the role of PCB is. What does it do then? Minimize the space of circuits. Minimize the space of circuits. Yes. Sorry. Okay, it makes the circuit less messy. Compactness, as you said. Other things? Say for example, you have this kind of circuit and the circuit is not working due to some kind of problem. Say one wire is loose. How would you detect that which wire is loose in this, this kind of circuits? You will need to go through each and every wire, right? But if you use a PCB, you have some test points as in you know where and when 
the fault will be there right those are some uh, advanced things but at least in a pcb you would know that where things are going because in pcbs everything that we do is very structured and layered these wires they are almost random although there is color coding i mean there is uh, the colors of different wires but which wire goes where you can you trace it no but have you seen a pcb right yes you have seen those perfect lines you can track them like a maze right so pcb makes the fault finding work easy that is one more advantage along with the compactness the messiness or the other things for fault finding is very easy in pcb okay so i hope you got the answer that why do we need a pcb for these things yes next slide please so this is a technical definition or the the definition provided by wikipedia or google please read it finished yes uh, did you understand anything from it yeah these are all the technical jargons that are there but what a pcb is in simple terms it has wires for connecting the components that you understand yes then it is a sandwiched on a layer of a substrate that substrate is nothing but a non conductive dielectric which is used to insulate the copper layers the components and if there is a second layer of copper to insulate that also the dielectric material that it uh, that it has it acts as a flame retardant material we use fr4 for pcb fabrication the fr4 stands for flame retardant version 4 what does the, what it does is whenever if certain things burn if the pcb burns due to any kind of mishap or any power failure anything the flame retardant material burns out completely it does not produce any fumes it does not leave behind any residue now why is that important say for example uh, if there is a fire if a fire broke out in such kind of environment you have your cushioning on your seats right the floor is also cushioned there are curtains so if a fire breaks out if a fire breaks out a person will not die because of that fire he will die because of the suffocation because the curtains the insulation the cushioning of the materials because they get burnt i hope you understand that yes, yes right have you heard uh, such scenarios where person suffocated to death because of fire yes yes fire is not the issue here because whenever a material burns it produces toxic flames and because of that when we inhale such flames person dies because of that so in case of any pcb we uh, you might know that uh, in a pcb or in any mobile or laptop there are various kinds of metals that are used there is solder which has lead in it there is gold and copper is there and also many other kind of materials right so when they burn they might produce toxic fumes which is very harmful for human lungs so it is necessary or it was imperative to introduce such a material that will burn out completely without producing any fumes and without leaving back any residue so that was flame retardant material that you are going to handle today fr4 so pcb is made on to fr4 right next slide so yes uh, we will start with the what all kinds of pcbs are there what uh, what is the uh, what are the industrial what does the industry use mostly uh, 99% of the pcbs that the world uses today are the first ones the rigid pcbs which are as the name suggests they are rigid the second type the flexible ones have you seen them yes where well. led lights 
LED strip lights, right? The third ones, aluminium back PCBs. Have you seen them? Have you seen them? No? Actually, you have seen them. The LED bulbs. Have you have you ever opened up an LED bulb? Yeah, yeah. Yes? yeah. Yes. The LED bulb, the PCB in that LED bulb is nothing but aluminium back. Do you know LED produces lot of heat? Yes. So it is necessary to cool it down. So the PCB made for the LED bulbs or LED tube lights, it has aluminium backing on it. So why is aluminium used there? To dissipate the heat. You, you know about heat sinks, yes. the PCs that use heat sinks. Nowadays we have water cooling and all, but previously there were heat sinks. So this, this, this same concept is used in the LED bulb, a cheap solution for dissipating the heat. So bulbs, LED tube lights, etc. use the aluminium backed PCBs. The fourth one, multi-layer PCB. What does the name suggest? Multi-layer as in? It will have multiple layers. So where is a multiple layer PCB used or what will be the application of for it? See, the first one, the first, uh, the rigid PCB, the rigid PCB, it can be a dielectric substrate upon which copper foil is laminated. You have encountered with the aluminium foils that you use for carrying your tiffin boxes, right? Same kind of copper foil is sandwiched between the dielectric material on either side of the substrate. It can be both the sides or it can be a single side, right? So sometimes there is a need for having multiple layers of copper to connect more components as in your mother motherboards or your mobile phones. Yeah. They have stacked PCBs. Have you heard of them? The thickness of PCB is very much uh, like uh, three or four centimeters. Nowadays, phones use stacked PCBs. Stacked PCB is nothing but a multi-layer PCB, wherein there are 8 to 16 layers of that copper foils sandwiched between the substrate layers. What for? To accommodate many components onto a smaller space. There, multi-layer PCBs are used. Multi-layer PCB is generally used where Three or four, if you needed three or four PCBs for one same application, you can club them by stacking them, right? That is an alternate and the best way to do that. Everyone agrees? Yes. So there are multi-layer PCBs coming. The PCBs themselves are very compact, but then multi-layer PCBs were introduced, which saved almost five times the space of existing PCBs in the same form factor and nowadays multi-layer PCBs are very much common. The first uh, one layer, single layer and double layer PCBs, they are used but they are used in very uh, low end consumer products. The higher end consumer products, they make use of multi-layer PCBs only. Then there is rigid flex PCB. What does the name suggest? Some part of it is rigid and the other part is flexible. Have you seen an example of such things? Mobile yes? No? Displays. Mobile displays. Have you seen the cable? What is that cable called? Flex cable. Flex cable. What, what it does is, it joins the display with the motherboard. That is also flexible PCB. The one end of it is connected to motherboard. So it can be categorized as rigid flex PCB, right? The last one is high density interconnect. Such kind of PCBs are used in spacecrafts or the space related applications. Also uh, the supercomputers that are, exist today, they make use of such high density interconnects. High density interconnects means whatever the amount of components that you use, high density interconnects at least uses four times more components in that same space. So why is it needed? Uh, just tell me why. Is there any reason to uh, make things more compact? Is there any need? <coughs> hmm. 
what is the difference between iPhone 6 and iPhone 13? Is there any difference? iPhone 6 was released in 2014, I think. Yes, and iPhone 13 was released last year, 2021. So a span of seven years. What all things might have improved? Battery backup has improved. Then cameras have improved. Performance have improved. Processor was improved. Security. There was no security in iPhone 6. I, I agree with that point. Has the size of phone changed relatively from iPhone 6 to iPhone 13? Yes. What What is the size? How is the size changed? Display has increased, means the display size has increased. But has it costed anything to the battery? In fact, the battery life is better now as compared to iPhone 6. Right? So, almost the same form factor, but things have improved radically. Everyone agrees to, the, to that? Yes? Even if you consider a phone that was released in 2018 or 2019, and the phones that are released in 2022, is there any difference? Is there any huge leap? No. Yes? As everyone is familiar with the Galaxy Fold phones? Yes? They usually depend on that rigid flex PCBs. Why? It is a folding phone, right? Even though it is a folding phone, it, it also requires some connectivity between the two halves. Right? So that is their application. The high density interconnects that for that example the apple phones are very very uh, proper example for that because in the same thing same form factor even an iphone 13 outperforms the latest laptops do you know that yes i5 laptops it outperforms the i5 laptops how how are they possible to do that they have computed the computing power of a laptop they have managed to put it in a phone it is because of the high density interconnect pcbs they are cramming up all the components that a pc used to have into a single handheld mobile phone that is the the the, the thanks to the, the thanks is to the hdi so is there any need to do that is there any need to do, do that? Would you mind carrying a laptop or a mobile with the same computing power? You would prefer a mobile, right? right. So that was a need. Reliability. Reliability is also there. You can rely on an iPhone 13 for whole day for all your needs, right? The same performance will be given by an i5, Windows i5 laptop, right? So there is, there is a need, right, to have portable computing with you yes? yes so that is why the high density interconnects pcbs uh, that were developed what these pcbs do is they have everything uh what how would i put it the processor uh, of those things or the control unit it lies at the center of the board or the pcb i mean if this is a room the processor would be pray, placed centrally in this room so that all the signals or all the uh, inputs coming to that processor from any direction in this room would reach at the same time. Consider this is a square room and the processor, a square one is placed in between that. So all the signals coming to it would be coming to it at the same time, right? And all the signals going from it at the same time. What would that do for you? The latency. Have you heard about the latency problem? While playing games, the latency or the lag would cost you frustration, right? <laughs> right? So, for that, things, this is the base of all those. Next slide, please. 
so there are certain things uh, i hope uh, sir uh, did you uh, give them the handouts you have you have the handouts with you yes yes so have you seen the pcb design on it the last page the third page okay so that pcb or that uh, pcb design is made by considering the design rule check or design rule constraints thing what does it do there are some rules bounding the operation of pcbs right if you make the tracks or if you connect the tracks too close to each other what will happen the circuits will short yes other thing if the circuits are not shorted what will be the other thing that is going to happen here have you came across uh, have you come across lens law what does it say or say let's start from the fleming's left hand rule or right hand rule first does anyone remember that no uh, i'll just uh, share a very crisp version of it that if an electricity is flowing through in, in a particular direction at certain point it will create a magnetic field around it which is perpendicular to the flow of electric field right and then that same magnetic field will try to cancel out the electric field magnetic field will cancel out the electrical field the electric field which caused the magnetic field right so in turn they will cancel each other out right but that is a very uh, rare phenomenon but if the tracks are so close to each other if the tracks are so close to each other we can hope that there will be a magnetic field produced there right if the magnetic field is produced there and if you have very time sensitive information time sensitive information as in if you touch the fire button in a game if it does not respond what will happen frustration so to avoid such things you need to take care of the designs and so there are some rules prescribed by ipc ce etc that we are going to discuss further so this is nothing but a design rule check which is a software feature which is present in every pcb designing software wherein you just have to analyze the circuit design that you have made to check for any errors that might cause shorting problems magnetic field problems emi electromagnetic interference emf because of the components used there right so this uh, the design rule check is for that yeah. it is a software feature available in any 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 software that you use for pcb design yes should we move ahead next thing right? the ce mark has everyone seen this yes these are all the examples that of of the ce mark so what does the ce mark prescribe the ce mark is generally used for products as in it is not for pcb only it is for products that means if a product is to be sold to consumers it has to comply with certain areas or certain safety measures those safety measures those what are all the clauses in that they are prescribed by the european union and are termed as ce mark so if a product has a ce mark it is universally available to anyone for consumer usage iphone is universally available same model everywhere in the world right so it complies with the ce mark so that is why it is universally available but if in case of redmi or anything is it available in the us no because those things do not comply with ce marks those are only for the asian markets so i hope the ce mark is for is for whatever that is written in the slide right as any everyone read that yes next one please these are the ipc standards that i was talking about 
in the previous slides we have seen that you will be using rigid pcbs rigid flex pcbs purely flexible pcbs etc so ipc standards they are prescribed by the indian printed circuit board association wherein there are various clauses for designing of rigid pcbs flexible pcbs rigid flex pcbs how would they be designed what will be the clearance between the two copper wires etc all those things they are mentioned in the ipc standards they are categorized the general ipc standard that we use is 2220 those series is used for consumer designed products the products that are available for the consumer use products are also available for military usage right military also uses this products electronic products but they are very different kind of nature so this ipc standards 2220 they are used for people like us those who are end users or consumers okay the next ones rohs compliance this is also one kind of compliance that the product or the devices that we use need to follow rohs stands for restriction of hazardous substances hazardous substances as in the solder that you use has certain amount of lead in it i hope uh, lead mercury etc you know the side effects if consumed by us maggie maggie had what maggie had what lead yes so it was banned for 2 years more than 2 years electronic components along with all this the metals mentioned in the red color they have all such kind of materials that we the phones that we use you do carry them with you right every day you carry them with you so it is bound that somehow we touch uh, the our hands with, uh, with the phone and the mouth it might happen so the the consumption of these metals or so the contact with this metal should be minimum so that it does not cause any harm to humans that is the rohs compliance okay next slide please this is the process that we follow to make an industrial pcb or this is how industrial pcbs are made it is quite a long process but all this process happens in a single day just just go through it can can you relate to some of the words that are used here yes which are which are those words design and output design and output design is nothing but designing your pcb layout yes then what is next is file to film file to film is nothing but the print out the print out that you take to manufacture your pcb fabricate your pcb then printing the inner layers is used for multi layer pcbs i said that it is it has many layers of pcbs so it obviously has inner layers right it is sandwiched between the same height that normally is available in the market so the inner layers the inner layers of the pcb that are pressed here then removing the unwanted copper that is nothing but etching process next no no not the next slide layer alignment and optical inspection for multi layer pcbs it is necessary that every layer should be one after the other if a certain layer is missed out or misplaced what happens if in a burger if the patty or the tomato is out what happens when you chew it it will fall down right that happens it can also happen with the pcb the electrical connections might not be done there if the layer slides out even so slightly by 1 mm right so that is uh, the thing is for layer inspection the next one is layer up and bond 
I said that you need to sandwich those. So sandwiching is nothing but putting all the layers together and wrapping it up. That is layer up and bond. Bonding is nothing but gluing those things together with an adhesive. Then drilling. It is common to you. Plating and copper deposition. What happens is you drill you drill out some holes. You want connection between say it is an eight layer PCB, okay? So you don't want connection between all the eight layers. You want connection only between the second and the fifth layer. So what would you do? You will need to isolate the other layers, right? You don't want the other layers to interfere with the second and the fifth layer, the electrical connectivity between them. So you isolate all those layers by masking them. Masking is nothing but you just put a tape and you color out the rest and then remove the tape, right? That is what you do. In PCB also, we deposit some special ink on that on the other layers. It's very fine thing to do. I mean the holes that are used to deposit are just 0 0.5 mm, 0 0.5 mm. So the other layers that are isolated and the second and the fifth layer will be exposed. In between those layers, the copper will be deposited. Then the ink from the other layers will be removed. That is nothing but copper plating and deposition. Outer layer imaging, you have sandwiched the all the layers but the top and the bottom layer is still remaining. That also needs to have some electrical connectivity. See, it might have positive and negative charge or the VCC and ground, right? So that if there is some kind of design, you need to make that. Then plating. You understand plating? Have you heard the word electrochemical plating? Chrome plating for cars, rims. Have you heard about it? This same, sorry? Thin layer of metal. Yes, a thin layer of metal or chromium is deposited onto other, another metal for giving it a defined finish. So in PCBs also we make use of that. What is that for? It is there for mechanical stability of the PCB. Then the final etching, if there is anything pending to etch out, we do the final etching then. Solder mask application. Did you get it or no? Solder mask application. We paint our houses, the inner interiors with the paint, right? What do we do it for? First one is the aesthetic purpose. That painted walls look good. Other aspect is We also do some waterproofing before we paint them, right? Right. So in order to hide that waterproofing, we apply the paint. Why is that waterproofing done? Why is that waterproofing done? To avoid leakage. Avoid leakages or if the water comes in, it looks bad. Why have we we constructed house then? Right? So, in PCBs also, we need to have this thing called a solder mask application so that the copper wires that are present on the board, they are not corroded. How is the copper corroded? It turns green or black, right? So, if it turns green or black, then it might cause the electrical connectivity to vanish or to be cut off due to some reason. What does the rust do to iron? It consumes it, it damages the product, so copper might be also damaged, your product might get damaged. So to prevent that damage or the, uh, the corrosion, we use solder mask. Masking is nothing but applying paint, the non-corroding paint to the PCB board. Then surface finish, surface finish is nothing but a conformal type of coating for waterproofing the components of the PCB. It does not make it waterproof, but to some extent, 
it makes it water resistant the silk screen silk screen is nothing but you know uh, the boards that we have they have written on and off sometimes by convention we know that if the button is pressed down it is on and if the button is upwards it is off but sometimes the connections are reverse it's for some machines have you seen them so for that we need to know where the on side is so the on written onto that thing is nothing but the silk screen that is for identification the last one sorry the, then there is electrical test electrical test or the quality assurance or the quality control by going through all these processes we need to ensure that this pcb is fit for what is fit for some kind of consumption or ready to be put it into some product if something misses out then that product should be rejected right and the final one is profiling or v scoring see uh, profiling and v scoring is nothing but there is no uh, limitation to the size of a pcb right there can be small pcbs uh, which can be of this size say 2 or 3 grains of rice might be there have you seen the charging port uh, or the charging battery circuitry of your mobile phones okay. yes it is very small those pcbs are very small right so is it possible to cut them and uh, ship them in that such small factor for for small form factor they might break during the transit right so what companies do is they make large sheets of such pcbs and then they score them or we groove them everyone has eaten uh, dairy milk chocolate right how are the patterns on that chocolate you can break them easily yes, yes? that is nothing but v scoring if you look up cadbury uh, by keeping it uh, on the periphery of your eye you can see that v or u right that is where from you break it right and it breaks in exactly those square or rectangles that is what is v grooving that is what we do for pcbs when we have to ship such small size of pcbs in large quantities the transport becomes easy the counting of such pcbs becomes easy one sheet may contain 50 pcbs random we can just hand out one pcb of a larger sheet right that is v grooving and finishing these are all the steps that we follow in the industry and these are very minimum steps that i have mentioned here okay next slide please the things that we discussed in the steps you have tracks tracks are nothing but the electrical conductivity yes the wires that are there on your pcb this those are shoulder bottom or tracks shoulder mask bottom is nothing but why is masking used i told you to prevent corrosion to prevent corrosion we ink the pcb with shoulder mask right so how do we do that the spots that you see there the spots that you see there those are the spots wherein your components will be soldered so you have seen those uh, small uh, silver spots the last one silk top or legends what does it convey the on or off thing that i told you what things are there yes so a pcb can must have all these three things right have you seen this kind of dots the silver dots this is the space for soldering the components okay so the black spots that you see there those are excluding those spots every other spot has green color to prevent corrosion and only those spots are left behind so that components will be soldered and they can be 
replaced if something goes if something goes off right the white color are you able to see it you can see this pcb after the seminar but the white color you are you able to see it on the green masking behind it yes, yes that is nothing but the silk topper legends used for identification which component goes where etc right i hope you understand these things the tracks they are for electrical conductivity masking is for preventing the corrosion and the legends are for identification of the components next slide as i told you is this the gist of all the processes that we discussed until now yes first we design the pcb in the software take the print out then we drill it then we iron iron it out or in the industry as we do it we do it by silk screening method silk screening method is the same method which is used to print t-shirts you know about it how the t-shirts are printed with graphics that is the same process we use then we have component uh, soldering component assembly and soldering then the final pcb is made and this is the final product ready with us okay next slide today for drilling you will be using a handheld drilling machine that is stationary but to make such kind of pcbs which are very intricate and use and require very uh, high precision we use cnc machine computer numeric control machine we program it to decide where the holes are there which kind of holes 1 mm 2 mm 3 mm etc program the machine and put the copper clad and then drill out the holes that is this that is the cnc machine for drilling and routing routing is profile cutting i mean if you have if you want to have a notch in the center of the pcb notch for what if something if something wants to come out of this pcb if there is some certain kind of uh, element or some kind of component that needs to be that needs to come out as in buttons on the front panel of the devices that you operate or the lcd display right so for that we use routing or the profile cutting it is used to cut out circles squares etc the same cnc machine can perform that the brushing and drying machine today you will be etching your pcbs right etching and then cleaning it with normal water then wiping it out right you need to do that no if a pcb gets wet you need to wipe it to make it dry but if in industry we do the same process repetitively it will take year years and years to do such single pcbs so for that we have this machine wherein the machine will scrub the copper board and then dry it and give it to us that is the second machine the curing oven i said that the green color is applied on this no yeah. green green mask is there ink is there so it also takes some time to dry yeah. we cannot leave it in the open air and say that it will dry in two days or three days if we let it out in the dry, uh, in the normal environment it will also attract dust particles yeah. and that is not useful for the pcbs so we use ovens normal ovens to dry the ink out next slide etching machine is used for etching out the pcbs today you will be uh, etching the pcbs in a tray wherein you will be uh, constantly moving the tray to etch the pcb but in industry and that will uh, you will be using fecl3 solution FeCl3 stands for ferric chloride. It is a very 
सेफ काइंड ऑफ एसिड आई वुड से बट इन इंडस्ट्री वी नीड फास्टर प्रोसेसिंग फॉर दैट वी यूज अमोनिया और सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड दैट इज हीटेड अप दैट इज हीटेड अप एंड देन पोर ऑन टू द पी सी बी फॉर एच एंग दैट जस्ट फास्ट ऑफ द प्रोसेस सो द अमोनिया बेन स्ट्रेचिंग मशीन इज यूज फॉर दैट रोलर टिनिंग मशीन टू डिपॉजिट द सिल्वर स्पॉट्स दैट यू सी यर इट विल हेल्प वेन यू माउंट कंपोनेंट्स ऑल्सो द सोल्डरिंग वायर दैट यू यूज Uh, the amount of soldering wire will be uh, it will be less required for this when you use the silver uh, the soldering roller tilting machine the v grooving machine for <coughs> cutting out the v scores cutting the pcbs cutting the pcbs partially okay those are not completely cut out just scored like a dairy milk chocolate okay next slide for cutting the pcbs the sides of this pcbs we use a cutting machine the second is manual drilling machine if in case the cnc machine fails to drill out a particular hole how would that happen two chances either the drill bit breaks off or msb decides to shut down the electricity that can happen in that case some of the holes some of the programmed holes might be missed so we need to drill them out again we cannot program the cnc machine again to do that one or two holes so we use manual drilling machine which we will be using today and then the shearing machine for cutting large sheets because this is not the pcb that you get in the market there are large sheets of copper clad to say 10 feet into 3 feet or so so for cutting those large sheets you need the shearing machine next slide please i said that you will be uh, getting a photo paper or glossy paper layout right in industry we use the silk screens so for printing the silk screens we use ultraviolet exposure what it does is that we use a silk screen literally made up of silk cloth upon that we print our layout by exposing it with uv light and then we use it for multiple copies printing multiple copies of tracks or legends anything then the belt sanding machine you know the fr fr4 is glass it is glass epoxy as in glass is crushed mixed with a kind of epoxy resin and then rolled out into sheets that is nothing but glass epoxy so the edges of this glass epoxy they are very sharp and may cut your hands so that is why to smooth out we use the belt sanding machine and the last one is deburring machine when you drill out the pcbs there will be certain copper sharpness that will be produced you are displacing the copper by drilling it right so the sharpness that are produced you need to remove them or they might damage your hand might cut your hand so for that we use the deburring machine next slide this was all about the industrial usage of machine today what we are going to learn or what we are going to do this is the outline for that session okay so you will all be provided with components and copper clad right you will be provided first you need to scrub that copper pad copper clad by using normal water and a scrubber anything then we will move on to printing the layout print outs have already been taken so don't need to do that then ironing the layout on the copper clad etching it after etching we will wash it because it has acid on it we will wash it with clean water then drilling it soldering the components and then finally testing out the pcb if it is 
working or not if it is not working we will troubleshoot troubleshooting will include either if you have not soldered the components properly or if the tracks are not printed properly etc got it next these slides contain animations so you can press the button because it might next slide printing the layout you have designed it you will print it through a laser printer inkjet sorry not the laser printer the inkjet printer on a glossy paper after that next slide you will be ironing it you will be placing that paper onto the copper clad then moving an iron on it how will you move that iron that i will be explaining to you in the class itself okay uh, on the hands uh, hands on session because the size of the pcb is just 6 into 6 cm so you need to be focused while using the iron there as it will be on the copper clad board so copper gets hot the iron itself is very hot area of operation is very small so take all the precautions okay next slide click it please next is the etching there are trays there to etch the pcb so in the trays what we are going to do is add the water first then put the fecl3 powder into it do not do the other way do not put the fecl3 first and then the water because if you put the water there is an exothermic reaction there is an exothermic reaction which may burn your skin so first water then fecl3 powder mostly i'll be doing it and you will be watching it but in the future just remember to put the water first and fecl3 later on and then we'll put the pcb into it and then shake the tray shaking is nothing but just moving it in one single axis like as shown in you get the motion of that you need to shake it like this only next slide after etching you will get something like this okay next slide next then after etching we need to drill the pcb uh, drilling will be done by using 1 mm drill bit also after that i'll give you the basics of how the soldering is to be done in the lecture itself after the component assembly we'll proceed to troubleshooting next this is very important part that you need to understand today first edges of copper clad the 6 cm by 6 cm copper clad board that you would get please mind the edges of it as i told you they might be sharp so if they are sharp please handle it carefully else you will cut your hand and then baki sab hoga reh jayega workshop second thing ironing as i told previously the area of operation is very small 6 cm by 6 cm the iron is relatively large so while ironing please focus on the task itself if someone calls you ignore them okay please ignore them because we don't want any accidents to happen okay third thing while using the etching solution as i told you i will only be mixing the fecl3 solution if you put your pcb is in it and while shaking keep the tray away from you because the stains fecl3 can give your clothes a stain 
that will never wash off also try not to spill it on the ground or the table because the stains won't go off it will stay there for lifetime so please mind your clothes also use rubber gloves yes because there might be some burning sensation you need to avoid that and your hands will also be stained but if your hands are stained it will go off but you need to have lunch so mind it the acid will go into your body fourth thing while drilling the pcb you hold the pcb with your left hand and hold the lever of drilling machine with your right hand right so while holding the pcb with your left hand please be firm press down the pcb as hard as you can so that it won't flicker or it won't swirl because the rpm of the machine is very high so mind the speed and focus hold it firmly fifth using the soldering iron soldering iron is again very hot it can touch temperatures up to it can touch temperatures up to 250 degrees celsius depending on how much time you operate it so while soldering you have your soldering iron in your right hand and the soldering wire in your left hand so please mind and please focus on the soldering spot where you have it okay all these instructions will be repeated in the hands on session but keep all these things in mind okay i hope you all have understood this yes sir yes so should we proceed for the hands on session yes sir okay thank you Also, we expect such more informative sessions in future. So, a big round of applause to both of you.